Hi, welcome to my tying bench. I'm Phil Rowley. Join me as I show you how I tie some of my favorite flies along with the tricks and techniques I use to tie them. Hopefully, you'll want to add these flies to your fly box as well, or perhaps incorporate the tricks and techniques into your own personal patterns. You know, early spring, late fall, water boatmen and back swimmers are active, offering some of the most exciting fishing of the entire still water season. Today, I'm going to tie you the Tin Man, a representation of the smaller water boatman. Join me and I'll show you just how easy it is to tie this fly so you can add it to your fly box. The Tin Man is intended to suggest mature water boatmen a popular trout snack in the early spring and late fall. This is a simple pattern and you'll only need a small selection of materials. All right, so let's tie the Tin Man. It's a little water boatman pattern, um, named because it's got a silver tin colored bead and we're doing a boatman, so Tin Man. Into the jaws of the vise, I've got a Daiichi 1530 size 12. 12s and 14s are what I tie this in most often. And we're going to use some white tying thread. Just get that started, break off the excess. Put a good thread base down. Advance the thread forward, just a little bit forward of the hook eye. And then for, we're going to put a little butt section on this. And the butt section, you could use silver mylar, but I love using this crinkle mirror flash. It's got that nice sort of mirage opal pearl color and really catches the light well. So I'm taking two strands. And we're just going to tie them in. Just get them started. Tying thread back up. And we're going to wind the two strands together, back down the shank. Into the bend a little bit. This is just a little bit of a flashy butt, if you will, to catch some light and help suggest the little air bubble that these air-breathing aquatic insects use to enable them to survive down in the water. Let's bring that up. I just brought that up to have a good purchase, and if, it, if this fly ever gets totally chewed up, um, we'll have a little bit of flash in there too. And I'm actually going to take this strand and secure it back down the shank like a little rib. So we're just going to hold that in place. Now we're going to tie in the wing case. And for the wing case, I'm using some skinny skin in mottled brown. And it comes in a big sheet. I'll show you what that looks like here. And I have trimmed a slip off of that sheet across its width. So it's about half the shank length. Sorry, half the hook gape. And then I've taken the other end and trimmed it to a point to aid tie-in. And what I'm going to do now is just separate the paper backing from the skinny skin itself and I'm going to tie it if you look at it closely there is a sort of more dull side and a shiny side so I'm going to tie in the dull side up the shank a ways by the tip tying it to a point like that just makes it easier to grab with the tying thread and then pull on it and secure it down, even wraps down to the base. Don't go too far back, just where the uh, midpoint, but I still want to leave a little bit of that flash showing for the barb. And then we're going to come forward, put a little tying thread in here. It's just going to help position our beads. And then we're going to tie in the legs now. And the legs are uh, centipede legs in modeled in a brown black coloration and I've got a small little slip small little section here and I'm just going to pinch just the shortest of length 
and just get that tied in directly behind the bead on the far side. Secure that back along the shank. Come forward. Loop it around in front, forming a horizontal loop. We'll and hold the other end along the near side. Get that tied in and you can manipulate that so you can confirm it's definitely along the sides and we'll just bind all that down. It'll help build up our body. And we have a little stub here, we'll just trim that guy right out of the way. And you can just make sure that they're positioned like that. We're gonna cut that loop open later to make our legs. Now for the body, we're going to use some of this uh, Montana Fly Mohair. This is 827 tan. It comes on a spool. Good body colors would be tan, like masking tape, like this one. An olive coloration or even yellow. Um, you can use any small, any thin material like this. I've used a uni stretch in the past, but I like the fuzzy nature of this yarn. And we're just going to start this yarn just like we would tying thread, directly behind the bead. Get a couple of wraps on. Just let that hang, trim that, unspin it, and I'm just going to use this and walk the thread back, that way it doesn't get in the way, and then just flip that underneath and walk this forward. So one wrap down on this number 12 and one wrap up is about the right proportions for the body. So we're just going to move this up, and by doing this my thread's always in the tie-off point. Just going to tie that off just behind the bead. Don't worry about those legs. Again, we're going to deal with those in a second. And now to further augment the flash, I'm just going to take that remaining strand of the crinkle mirror flash and just rib the fly in open turns. This isn't just so much, this isn't really imitating body segmentation. All this is doing is adding another element of flash to help catch light and suggest that bubble of air that these insects take along their journeys with them, their aquatic journeys. So we're going to come in now and just trim about the midsection of this um, loop and free it up. And those legs are way longer than we need. So I'm going to bring my tying thread back up behind the bead and secure the far leg so it points backwards, come back forwards and do the same for the near side leg. Just get that where I want it along the side, a couple of wraps, and now I've got a nice little swept back pair of legs. Bring the tying thread back up forward, and we're going to fold the skinny skin over, a little bit of tension, not too tight, once, twice, a wrap in front, and then just nip the excess away and what we're going to do now is I like to put a little bit of red in my boatman patterns and that's why we're using the white thread. I'm going to turn it red with a good old sharpie and this helps suggest they a lot of times the many species have kind of red eyes and it's just a little red hot spot if you will. So by coating that with red thread, sorry with the red marker, I now create a little red hot spot and I can add a little bit of glue, a little bit more just coat that and then we're just going to whip finish don't need too much of a whip finish here three or four turns is fine and again you see that now we got that nice little red hot spot there and we can come in and trim our legs and these are stretchy of course so we don't want to pull on them and we I'm just going to come up about the the back of the barb sorry the back of the bend and trim them and that'll bring them into a nice proportional size and now all it's left to do is we're going to add a little bit of additional shine to this in the form of Solara's bone dry and I'm just going to use the brush applicator and just coat the entire back of the fly and that'll just pile up neatly. You can even put a little dab if you want on that butt area to protect it and also kind of lights it up a little bit. And we just let that sit, make sure it's leveled out nicely. Come in, 
put the light on it for 10 seconds or so, make sure she's good and and there you have it, your finished Tin Man. We've got a few long strands there. You could certainly come in underneath if those bother you, but again, to me, those are going to help trap bubbles as well and just give the fly a bit of translucence. But there you have it, finished Tin Man. A fun little fly to fish on a floating line. Cast it out, let it sink, strip it back, a hover line, anything like that. But anytime boatmen are active, spring or fall, Give this Tin Man a try. I'm sure it'll work as good for you as it has for me.